These here are not just big sunglasses so you can look cool, like this guy. They are special glasses. Augmented Reality Display Glasses, the X-Real Air 2 and Air 2 Pro. Pop these bad boys on your awesome face and poof, like magic, wherever you're sitting, it'll be as if you're sitting in front of a giant virtual display. Is this a glimpse into the future of personal entertainment, or is it just some weird thing that's fun to watch YouTube video reviews about? The answer to both questions is yes. Today we're going to be talking about the X-Real Air 2 glasses, by X-Real, obviously. We're going to see what these things are all about, and also X-Real has a new product that they're unveiling at CES, and I get to show you that. These things are interesting as heck. I've had these for about a month now, and I've been using them a ton. So the idea here is that they are glasses that you can wear, and you'll be able to hear the audio right in your ears, and in the glasses you'll be able to see a screen, like a huge high quality screen. I'm going to try to show you what that's actually like and tell you what I think of the experience, but first let's go over my unboxing footage. Uh, they sent me a big box full of stuff, starting out with a nice little note. Isn't that nice? And two pairs of glasses, the Air 2 and the Air 2 Pro, which we'll look at in a bit. I got a bunch of stuff here, uh, some official X-Real cables, a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-C to HDMI cable, and the X-Real Beam. I didn't know what this was at first because it said 4,870 milliamp hours on it, but it turns out this is an optional interface device for you to be able to control the virtual display and uh, adjust the settings. You can use the device without this though, more on that later. And they also sent me a t-shirt, extra large. I wear a small, so yeah, it's, it's the thought that counts. Let's uh, start with the Air 2 non-pro. The box itself is beautiful and it all unfolds for you like origami. You guys know I love me a fancy unboxing. And the glasses come with the USB-C cable and some word papers, of course. Gotta have your word papers. So there's a USB-C plug on the arm of the glasses. So this gets plugged in there. And I took my actual glasses off because I figured I'd see what this was like without them. I'm pretty blind without my glasses. And yeah, as soon as it started booting up, I could tell that wasn't going to work well. I'll just describe what I'm seeing here. It started with a setup thing and then it started a software software update. It was a one gigabyte update and it took about 30 minutes to download. And then it gave you a quick tutorial walkthrough of the controls on the beam. And then it has a home screen similar to like a basic Android home screen with a clock and just links to the settings and stuff. And then uh, onto the Air 2 Pro. And the unboxing was exactly the same, but uh, I wanted to check out this extra stuff here because in this cardboard thing, we get some stuff. We get some nose pads, so if you have a little nose or a medium nose or a big schnoz, you can change these out to be more comfortable. And then there's this part. This is for pe people like me, people who wear glasses. So you can take this frame to your optometrist and get them to put some lenses in there for you. I intended to do just that, but I did something else instead. More on that later. The lenses connect up to the nose piece so you can lock those together and then slide it into the glasses and the lenses would sit between your eyes and the display so you can actually see stuff. And of course I had to try a game. I had a Lenovo Legion Go on hand so I plugged that in and instantly it worked. I, I just wanted to get to the point where I could try a game and I got there so I figured that I'd do some more tests and do a full review later. But that was over a month ago since I did the unboxing. After that I realized I wanted to do a lot more testing and put this thing through its paces and also get the prescription lenses sorted out. And then Xreal asked me very nicely if I'd hold off posting my review until CES because they had a new product that they wanted to announce and they'd be grateful if I'd share their new stuff in my review video. So we'll do that. We'll talk about the new Xreal product that'll be announced at CES at the end of the video. But we'll focus on this thing first. And I haven't done a good job of explaining what this thing actually is. So let's do that. The idea here is that the Air 2 projects a display onto the little lenses within the glasses. And because of the focus and the distance, that makes it seem like there is a very large display floating out in front of you. The effect is really cool actually. It really does feel like you're looking at a giant TV. 
like a bright, high-quality 1080p TV. And there is also audio built into the glasses. They have little speakers near your ears, which actually sound really good. And they're quiet enough that they're not blasting into the room that you're in. If you have them loud, people around you will hear your content. So, you know, <laughs> be careful what you're watching. But if you have the volume quiet, nobody around you should really be able to hear anything. It's an impressive audio-visual experience overall, but it, it's not going to be for everyone for a few reasons that we'll talk about. The difference between the base and the Pro is just that the Pro has local dimming. So the glasses are pretty transparent, but on the Pro, you can push this little button and that makes them a bit dimmer and then a bit dimmer and all the way down to very dim. And then there's this cover that you can put over them to completely black them out. The non-pro doesn't have the local dimming feature. That's the only difference. So you can have the regular view and then you can have the cover to black out the view. You can use the glasses without any other accessories. You can plug them right into your USB-C video device like your phone or your Steam Deck or your Switch and instantly you'll see your screen. Huge. It's as if you're staring at a giant wall-sized 1080p 120 hertz display. However, when you're using the glasses plugged directly into your device, you won't have any control over the screen's size or motion. It'll, it'll just be a giant screen. And it will always be in the center of your vision. So if you move your head around, the, the screen will move around with you. And this is where the beam attachment comes in. So first of all, it's a battery bank, so it has that going for it. The main purpose of the beam is to be able to have fine control over the visual screen size and position. So you plug the glasses into the beam and then you'll be able to see that the beam has a basic interface. Settings app, some sort of file browser. In the settings, you can tweak a few things about the brightness and the audio sound and do a firmware update, but it's all really basic stuff. But then when you plug your device into the beam, you'll be able to see that in the glasses. But now you can use the controls on the beam to adjust the screen settings. You can uh, adjust the screen size and position so you can have the virtual screen seem like it's close to you, as if you have like a big 32 inch monitor at arm's length, or you can have it move back away Away from you so it feels like you're looking at like a wall sized TV on the other side of the room. The main benefit to the beam is the other view modes. You can have the screen do what they call smooth follow. So like as you move your head to look around the room, the, the screen will follow your vision, but it'll have a bit of a smooth movement to it, which is supposed to help with motion sickness. Also, you can have the screen stay put in what they call body anchor. So as you look around the room, the screen will stay in the correct place and it'll feel more like you're in a room with the actual display rather than a magic floating display following your eyeballs. And also you can put the screen small in the corner of your vision so you can do like other stuff and keep your video where you can always see it unobtrusively off to the side. These things are not cheap. The Air 2 is 400 bucks. The Air 2 Pro is 450 and the beam attachment is 120. There's a sale going on right now, so you can save a bit of money, but yeah, not, not cheap. Uh, you remember how I mentioned that I'd be getting prescription lenses? Well, I went to my local optometrist to get a quote to put the lenses in here, and well, <laughs> here's the actual quote that I got. It was gonna be 264 Canadian bucks, which is about 200 USDs. Yeah, no way I was gonna pay that. So I found a place online that does them. There are a few places, but the place that I ordered from was called VR Rock. They made them according to my prescription and the total cost including shipping was 67 bucks. And the Air 2 with the prescription lenses is better. Uh, not amazing, but better. Uh, obviously having good eyesight is more ideal or contact lenses, I guess. I just find that the lenses aren't quite the right size to allow a full view. Uh, can you see here, like at this angle in the camera, how the prescription lenses only cover part of the display lenses behind them? You can actually see that while you're using them. The display is only in focus right where the lenses overlap. It works, but it's definitely not like an immersive experience because you can kind of see the edge, you know? And even though my prescription is correct, which I can tell because the lenses are fine, I can see perfect in real life with these, the virtual screen is still a little bit blurry. It feels almost like there's a very slight ghost image, double focus thing. Now, I've been using these for over a month and I've given them a really good chance and I have mixed feelings about them. First, I gotta mention that these things look silly on your face. They sorta look like regular sunglasses, but they also sorta look like big fake weird sunglasses that are floating away from your face. 
I like the simplicity of using the glasses without the beep because I could just take the glasses and cable and use them as my display without any other stuff. But I do not find it very comfortable to have the screen move with my head. I find I have to keep my head very still and look around on the screen with my eyes because if I move my head to look at stuff on the screen, then the screen moves. And that gives me motion sickness very quickly. And I'm not particularly prone to motion sickness either. The beam is supposed to take care of this and it does, but it introduces other problems. The smooth motion is way better in this regard, but the body anchor is really where it's at. Because the screen stays put, you can move your head around all you want. However, the field of view in the glasses isn't great, so when you're looking at like the left side of the screen, the right side will be cut off. This is fine for a movie or something, but it's not good for a game because in games you have to be constantly looking at different parts of the screen, and very quickly you'll realize that the whole viewing experience just feels compromised in any type of view mode, even when using the beam. Also, the beam is a bit janky in terms of what inputs it can take. My original Steam Deck could plug right in and worked fine, but my OLED deck only recognizes this as a media player. So I have to use this USB-C to HDMI dongle, and there's audio delay when using the Beam. So for gaming, that's not ideal. I literally couldn't play Muse Dash using the Beam because the rhythm was so off. And also, connections are inconsistent. Plugging stuff in via HDMI works as long as the device has a standard resolution, but none of my retro handhelds worked properly. I tried several different ones and always there was weird glitchy stuff going on with the video display inside the X-Reel. If it seems like I'm being negative, that's because this setup is expensive. And I don't want to tell you it's amazing and have you go out and pay big bucks and then be disappointed. It's a very cool device and I do often enjoy using it. When I'm sitting on the couch doing some low stakes gaming or watching some adventure time, it's a really enjoyable experience. And for some people, maybe willing to deal with a bit of the jank to get the unique experience of having a giant portable screen that you can take anywhere, this might be a must-have thing. I would definitely not hesitate bringing this while traveling so that I could have a big screen to stare at to pass the time, but I would personally never pay $500 to get this experience. But whether or not it's worth it for you is up to you. I'm just here to show you the stuff the, the pros and the cons and let you decide for yourself. I will leave a link to where you can pick one up in the description below. And now on to the CES stuff. This is the X-Real Air 2 Ultra and it's supposed to be like a full augmented reality version of the Air 2. Featuring 6 degrees of freedom via dual 3D environment sensors with computer vision capabilities, Xreal Air 2 Ultra is poised to invigorate the spatial computing developer community by providing an affordable alternative to competing devices, including Apple's Vision Pro and MetaQuest 3. Not just high in tech, Xreal Air 2 Ultra is high in fashion and features a sleek new titanium ring frame as part of its iconic Wayfarer-esque design, commanding attention from tech and fashion enthusiasts alike. So, so from what I understand, this is currently a product for developers, but eventually this will become a customer product. It's actually really cool sounding. I hope I can try one out someday, and I'll include a link to the Xreal website in the description below where you can find out more. And that brings us to the end. I'm super curious to hear what you think of these things. Are you interested? Are they cool? Stupid? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, if you haven't subscribed yet, well, you can fix that mistake by clicking this button right there. And that's it for me for today. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.